Chapter 12, Let's Make a Deal. Mr. O'Shaughnessy, so nice of you to return my call. Madame Leon smiled at the phone, truly pleased. Madame Leon, I must say you made quite a memorable impression in a very short time, Bobby chuckled. When it comes to my family, Mr. O'Shaughnessy, I believe in being direct. I realize that is not very diplomatic, but my husband is the diplomat in the family. Madame, I respect your loyalty more than you would understand. Well, Mr. O'Shaughnessy, if we are to be friends, then you should call me by my first name, Lizette. My friends call me Liz. Very well, Liz. Please call me Bob. Only my close friends do that. Thank you, Bob. I can see why my daughter has fallen in love with you. Your loyalty and consideration is touching, to say the least. I take it you have called about my offer of a stand-in for my daughter? I think the least I can do is hear you out. I must admit, this is a first for me. Having the ambassador's wife pimping for me is truly intriguing thought, and now I'm very curious. Bob, in the world of diplomacy, many marriages are both arrangements and sometimes business mergers. Some of the men are gay, bisexual, or too old to be interested in sex any longer. Some are swingers and are into, shall we say, group activities. I know who is doing what to whom, and I would like to introduce you to some of these people as a friend of mine. That is, if you are interested. Liz, you are willing to do this for me in return for getting Brigitte back into circulation, so to speak? As I told you, I am happy to find you a new sex toy to replace my daughter. Is that not fair? That sounds reasonable, but your daughter is both very beautiful and very passionate. She will be hard to give up, let alone replace. Are you trying to negotiate a better deal, Bob? Her eyes narrowed and her breathing quickened, but her voice did not betray how she felt. Possibly. Is there anything else on the table? He asked in a voice that had a questioning edge to it. I see, Bob. So you have me at a disadvantage and intend to take advantage of the situation? Would you respect me if I didn't explore all the available options? Bobby smiled, a teasing smile at the phone. Probably not. What would a man like you want? Or should I ask, how much? She was no longer smiling. It always came down to this question. That's why this Mr. Bobby person had to go. He could never be the man for her Brigitte. Liz, I think you misunderstand me. I was not thinking of diamonds or cash. I had something else in mind. And what might that be, Bob? I admit that I am now very curious what would motivate a man such as you. You do not want my valuables, so what do you want? I want Philippe Vachon's head on a platter, madame. The man is an ill-mannered jerk and needs to be financially broken and publicly humiliated. You want to cause pain and misery to a disgusting pig like Philippe? I applaud your choice of victims, but why him? Let us say that his very loud mouth has become too offensive and he needs to be muzzled in a public way. Not to mention winning the money he talks about as a side bet. I think I understand. Just how can I help? I'm not sure how you can help, but the question is, will you help me to ruin this man? Mr. Bob, if you only knew how much difficulty and embarrassment this man has caused us officially as a citizen of France legitimately working here, on top of that are the complications he has caused unofficially by his indiscretions. So my assistance in helping you is more important than, say, diamonds or money? Do I look like the type of man that can be bought that easily? Bob, I hate to tell you, but most everyone has a price. Yours just happens to be something other than money. Madame, I am not above making money on this. I just want his money, not yours. As far as Brigitte goes, I do like her and I want what is best for her. I am more than willing to step aside, as we would say, for someone who has more honorable intentions. Someone that can provide the life she has been raised to be a part of. Bob, I am afraid to admit that I am shocked speechless. I was more than willing to pay a rather large sum of money to be rid of you. Now I realize what my daughter sees in you and respect you all the more for it. How can I help with this project? Liz, in America we have a term we call the inside man, or spy. I need a spy that is close to this man. Since it is your fellow countrymen that I wish to destroy, you could be very helpful. Bob, my most sincere apologies for underestimating you so. I thought that you were just another fortune hunter, or at the very minimum an opportunist. As our only child, Brigitte stands to inherit a great deal of money 
not to mention what she will get in her divorce settlement. Please forgive my concerns about your motivations or intentions. No offense taken, Madame. If we do not look out for our loved ones, then what are we? I am so pleased that you understand. Now how can I help cause the ruin of our resident pig? He is a disgusting man who has offended everyone and has very few friends that I am aware of. First of all, how is it that he is willing to wager such a large sum of money on a race so casually? Just how fast is his Benz? My dear Bob, Philippe is both an alcoholic and a problem gambler. He's gotten himself into trouble many times with his excessive drinking and whoring, not to mention his gambling debts. None of the embassy women will have anything to do with him, so he can only consort with the local prostitutes. What diseases he has been exposed to, I can only imagine. His Mercedes is a fast car, but nothing special that I am aware of. You know, Liz, I think we are going to become good friends. I'm not sure how Brigitte will feel about that, but she will get over it in time. My friends and I want to build a race truck that will beat his bends and take his money. It would be nice if we could keep an eye on him and his activities, as we say. Is there any chance you could keep me informed on what he is doing and who he talks to? If we are racing for a large sum of money, I'm sure he will cheat if given the opportunity. Bob, why don't you let me do a little investigating on this and I will get back to you. I always wanted to be a spy, but I never thought I would be spying for you Americans. And with that, she hung up.